This is hard to admit as a Liverpool fan, but I do not want to see Everton drop down to the championship. Yes, that is obviously a possibility. All of you have seen the news of Everton being deducted six points, but luckily it was dropped to four after. And right now, as we speak, Everton is in a 16th position with 26 points on them only four points ahead of Luton Town, who have surprised people often enough this season. I think everyone is aware that Luton Town on their day can get a result against basically anybody. So the big question is, what is going on at Everton? Being in that 16th position is obviously not good enough for a club this size. We are talking about a team that have been crowned champions nine times in England. That is insane. People have already forgotten how huge this club used to be, still is, but they were up there at the top of English football. And today my job is to take this team, the blue side of Merseyside, to the top again as a Liverpool fan. This is going to be very odd. But then again, Jamie Carragher used to be an Everton fan as well, right? So he played for Liverpool. It's all good. Before I even dive into the team itself, I just want to quickly say huge shout out to all of you guys wishing me the best. As you guys might have seen at the end of the last video, I announced that at the end of this month, April, I will be moving to Dubai. Yes, it is officially happening. And I want to say a huge thank you to the entire community that has made this life possible. It has pushed me to a place now where I think our content is going to go next level. I cannot wait for it. So once again, thank you to all of you. But right now, let's focus on the team. First of all, the biggest issue within this Everton side, when you look at the team right now, you might not see it, but I can tell you right now that the top scorer for Everton right now is the Corey. Yes, a midfielder. This is a man that used to play defensive, then was pushed into the number eight, and now has become all of a sudden a center attacking midfielder by the looks of things. He has scored six goals for the team, while the top, top striker, DCL, Dominic Cavett lewin has only been managing to get four goals this season, the same amount as Harrison, but it's not all bad. In my opinion, this Everton side still has a couple of incredible quality players that a lot of Premier League sides will be fighting for in the transfer market. And one of them, in my opinion, is Onana. This guy, if he can get his game right, he could genuinely be world class. I'm not kidding, man. I think he's insane. I remember the days when he used to play at highest foul. Hamburg in Germany, I believe that's him, right? He used to be insane. And now at Everton, in, in certain games, I think, wow, unbelievable. And in other games, I'm like, did he even play? I want to see that consistency from him. And I think if any coach can get it out of him, he will be world class. I'm putting it out there right now. But the player I've been talking about since last season when he was at PSV Eindhoven and came on as a substitute and then started to play game after game until he was injured, I believe, Jared Branthwaite, an English left-footed centre-back who can play the passes perfectly with his right foot or left foot. In my opinion, alongside Onana, even maybe ahead of Onana, he is a clear standout player in this Everton side to me this season. I think he is incredible and it's such a shame that he actually plays at Everton because I would love him on the red side of Merseyside. I'll be honest with you there. Everton fans, I would love to have Branthwaite playing for Liverpool. He would be incredible. When he was at PSV Eindhoven, when I was so impressed with his size, with his ability on the ball, his passing play, everything just seems perfect about this kid. And I really hope he stays in the Euros team for England as well. So that is all I want to say initially about this team. Now, let's get to work. This team needs goal scorers. And for that, I want to play a more attacking formation. No one striker up top. No, no. We're going to go half. Put some respect on the MLS. This is Cucho Hernandez, a young man that used to be in Europe at one point, I believe. He was like a wonder kid. And now lately in America at Columbus Crew in the past year, he has scored 28 goals and gotten 10 assists. If those numbers don't impress you, I cannot help you. He is clearly, in my opinion, an even better player than Messi in the MLS. I am not kidding you here. I think he's class over there. Yes, Messi is the GOAT. For me personally, the best ever play the game. But right now, 
In the MLS, I would say Cucho is the man, and I changed the formation. I want to play the 4-3-2-1, and Cucho comes in perfectly in here, as he will be taking over a center forward position for me. So, where is he? Where the hell is he? There he is, 78 rated. He can play the center forward position. He has pace, he has shooting, he has passing, dribbling, physicality, four-star weak foot, quick step, acrobatic. What else do you need? That is the first signing we're making. But before I can make any more signings, I actually need to sell a couple more players. So let's get rid of a couple of players. I respect Tarkovsky, but at some point we will have to move on. And this could be the perfect replacement coming in. This is Eintracht Frankfurt's Brazilian centre-back, Tuta. He even can play in the CDM position at times, and I am someone that thinks he's class. At times, he looks incredible, but then he does have consistency issues. Michael Keane plus 5 million for Tuta to join us. I think this is going to be an amazing signing for us. He comes in with a 76 rating, 24 years old, so he can immediately compete with Brantwaite for a position. Tarkowski, obviously a big player for this side and a former Burnley player that, you know, you would just associate with long balls coming in and him just winning the duels for his defense. He will be someone that will have to move on at some point. And the same thing for the right back position. Coleman, the legend of Everton, will be moved on at some point. And at this point, I'm just sat there thinking, what do I do with that right back position? Do I go ahead and spend money on it? Or do I go and look at the youngsters that we have that could take over that spot? Nathan Patterson is an incredible talent and he could take over that right back position for us. So I sent him out on loan for now until the end of the season. He should be higher rated, at least a 75, and then he could probably take over that spot for us. Cermiti, also very talented player, by the way, just hasn't really broken through at Everton. 72 rated at this stage. He has gone out on loan and many others, as you can tell, are out on loan as well. Mopai is still an Everton player. Oh, okay. I did not know that actually. But then again, Jack Harrison is only loaned into the club right now. And I want to focus on players that are actually belonging to Everton as much as I possibly can to build the future of this team. And I got to say, as much as I trust McNeil and Hernandez in the, in the center forward positions, I don't trust Calvert-Lewin. I just have to say, it. I don't think he's the man for this team. I don't think he ever, ever will be. Initially, Evan Ferguson was meant to be that guy at Brighton until Joao Pedro came in and stole that spot from him. Obviously supplied by injuries at points as well, but Evan Ferguson has lost his position at Brighton. Joao Pedro has turned out to be the bigger player in that team. And for that reason, he is just not getting enough playtime. At least he's not starting any games for Brighton. And we all know what kind of incredible talent he is. So I'm actually taking a risk right here. I will be putting on Evan Ferguson onto the bench, just like Tuta as well, for one season to build him up behind Cavett Lewin. And at some point, he will be taking over that position. And we will see Evan Ferguson lead the line for this Everton side. He is six foot two tall, 18 years old from the Republic of Ireland. He is going to be a massive player at some point for us. But it's not just going to be right now. DCL, you're lucky. You're getting one season with us now. And all of that probably just because... We have budgetary constraints right now. Season one on the blue side of Merseyside has worked out quite well. We are actually in the final of the FA Cup. So let's immediately dive into it and see if we can win a trophy. It is, however, against Manchester United, who do have a strong enough lineup to beat us here. That is for sure. Lucas Vasquez has joined them as a right back. Interesting. But can you lads please win this? Onana is on a red card, so he won't be playing... It's a 2-1 victory. Dwight McNeil now turns center forward, gets a goal, and Kucho does the same. Now, let me show you something. This is our first season, and instantly we win a trophy. That is incredible. But as I said, the MLS is not to be underestimated. Kucho coming in, first season in the Prem, 30 goal contributions in 45 games. Amazing stuff. And much respect to Dominic Cavett-Lewin. He stepped up for us, got 18 goals and three assists this season, while Mopé, out on loan, got 12 and 1 for Brentford, which is also impressive. McNeil with 9 and 6. 
And as we go into the next season, we will be making some quite harsh decisions. Now, as we see right here, obviously, Evan Ferguson on the 78 now, he's going to be the main man. He is the future of this club. And if he can get a rating above Cavett Lewin, I fully assume he's going to be taking over that starting lineup position. But because of the great performance of DCL, I will actually allow him to, to stick at the club and be a backup striker for us, unless he causes any problems and Evan Ferguson doesn't get playtime for it. But I'm very happy with the front three right now. In midfield, Ghana has gone up to a 77, or Nana has turned into a center midfielder, 80 rated. Dokore has gone down to a 78. He is already kind of prepared. Has he gone down or was he 77 rated to begin with? Anyways, he is someone that we will not be building for the future with. And a brand weight going to an 80 is solid, but it's also solid that Tuta has already gone up to a 78. Tarkovsky can get another season with this Everton side. The right back position, though, is a spot that we desperately need to improve. And luckily for us, we do have a young right back coming through after a lone spell at Napoli. Nathan Patterson will be coming back at least at a 75 rating, which instantly makes him a starting 11 player. I just realized that we will be playing European football this season. And on top of it, Dursbury Hall is joining us. Why am I getting this man from the championship into our team? First of all, he has been massive for the likes of Leicester City throughout this past year. He has gotten 11 goals and 13 assists for his team, showcasing how good he can be in a more attacking eight role for his side. And for that, he will now be that man for our team. Coming in with a 79 left-footed and so well-rounded. I do understand he's not the youngest player. He comes in at the age of 25, but that means we can get a solid seven years out of this man. So I'm very excited about this signing because it's not one that most people would make, but because of his performances in the championship, I think he deserves to be part of this squad. And he is the official first signing of Everton in season two. Now in this rebuild, I think it's gonna be very important to build a team that is gonna be competitive within itself as well. So I'm gonna bring in some really good players as backups. Yunus Musa is gonna be joining us for 19.9 .9 million, the former Valencia player and now plays for AC Milan, has become a part of our team. He could be a starter. He could be someone that plays on the bench. He is just incredible in terms of his stats nonetheless. I mean, look at them. They look unbelievable. And seems like he can play center forward as well, which, wow. He can play right back, center mid, center forward. Anything you can't do, pal? <laughs> I am really surprised about, about this. But... He's going to be a big part of our team from now on. Musa comes in at the age of only 21. 21. There aren't that many actual center forwards in the game, but this is one that I remember watching two years ago, I believe, when he was at New York City FC. And I thought, okay, this guy has something special about him. Seems like he has made moves since then. I haven't been able to follow his career, but Thias Magno is going to be joining us right now as a center forward to come off the bench. This is a Brazilian player that loves to skill past people. 86 pace, 82 dribbling, five star skill moves. Whoa, the man has six play styles. This is the type of player that if you grow him into a beast, he probably becomes the best player in terms of gameplay. Another player to join Everton right now is going to be a man from Lille, Thiago Santos. They keep pumping out talents. We keep buying them. This is going to be a player that comes in to cover the fullback positions for us, which is obviously going to be important. Santos comes in with a bunch of pace, decent amount of dribbling, high attacking work rate as well, which can be useful if we need anyone to bomb forward from that defensive spot. But for now, I'm actually pretty happy with how this, uh, this bench is looking. And I can't spend any more anyways, because, you know, money... Well, the Europa League, as you can tell, right there against AS Monaco, that's where it all ended. But we did continue and we once again find ourselves in another FA Cup final. I love the fact that our team has become a tournament team. Gives me hopes for Champions League football later on. But let's go ahead and dive in. And after that, we'll see where we finished in the league. Aston Villa coming in with Morata. Okay, then. That is going to be interesting. Hopefully our defenders can deal with him as we jump in and get what result 
bang. What is it going to be? This time we lose. At a stage where I thought our team was looking much better, we did fail miserably. Okay, then. That is not acceptable. Now, let me see where we finished in, in the league itself because we don't have European football unless we finish in that position right there. Sixth, 63 points. Everton gets European football once again and pushes itself up into the top eight of Premier League football which is the spot that I used to see Everton a lot in. But now things have changed. Let's go ahead and take a look into the team itself. Evan Ferguson, 84 rated. Cucho leading the line with an 85. McNeil, 84. Our midfield with the new signing of Dewsbury Hall and Onana now with the 83 rating, both of them. Ghana has gotten up to an 80 rating, which is decent enough. Tarkovsky, by the way, has been replaced by now. 82 rated Tuta has been playing those games for us. But a right back position, there's a battle going on between Patterson and Santos. Santos on an 80 rating. He has gone up by like plus five this season, which has earned him that position for now. In the left back spot, Mikolenko looking strong. Pickford 85 rated and 31 years old. At some point, he will have to be replaced. But that time has not come yet. Goalkeepers can play on for a long time. Now, top scorer is of course it is Cucho Hernandez coming in with 22 and a 30 goal contributions this season Evan Ferguson bringing in 18 goals which I believe is the exact same amount that Cavett Lewin had for us last season but he has grown by plus six and that is a really good sign if he just gets a plus three next season that's an 87 rating which already makes him one of the best strikers in world football McNeil coming in with 16 and 11 Dewsbury Hall first season seven and nine and Musa has taken over the position from Ghana I guess six uh six goals and three assists so that has changed okay so two players have been replaced in the starting 11 and I gotta say I like that because gameplay wise, Musa probably feels a ton better than Ghana. No disrespect. Based on the model of Vicario, who, by the way, yesterday made an insane 1v1 save in Tottenham's game, we're going to bring in an Italian goalkeeper once more. This time it is Elia Cabril. This guy is a young and talented goalkeeper whose contract was running out. So it was perfect for us to bring him into this squad at the rating of 80. Yes, we are looking at a man that is only 23 years old as we speak, six foot three tall. And he will take over from Pickford when his time comes. Until then, Pickford is our number one. And that makes sense. Despite us taking part in Europa League football this season, I have to disappoint. Because in the round of 16, we got kicked out by Napoli. Who then went on to beat Porto. Then beat the likes of Inter. But then in the final, they lost against Sevilla. And Sevilla and Europa League, it's just... You know, it's simple. So they got that one covered. In the Premier League, though, first of all, actually, FA Cup, we're not in the final. This time, we're not there. In the Premier League, Everton has made it into the top four, just six points behind three teams with 81 points fighting for the title. What a mad title race that must have been. By the way, how many points do you think will be the gap between the title winners in the Premier League this season and the second place team? it genuinely could come down to a goal difference. That would be nuts. But let's move on and take a look into our squad itself because the squad that we have built, including the bench that we have right now, is looking unreal. The starters, Ferguson, 89 rated. McNeil, 87. Cucho, 88. In midfield, everyone is on an 85 and extremely well balanced. And then going into defense, Mikolenko, 85. Santos, 85 as well. Tuta as well. And then Branthwaite leading the line with an 88 rating. Pickford with the 87. And the bench, as you can tell, is filled with great players. And I got to say, it feels like we have built an all-round great squad, not just the starting 11. And Evan Ferguson comes in as the top performer in terms of goals. 32 and 5, McNeil 24 and 8, Cucho taking a step back this season. I'm sure he's going to get a lot more goal contributions go contributions next time. Musa from midfield 13 and 11 came in as a backup and now is dominating that midfield. This Everton side will now be playing Champions League football and hopefully fighting for the title. No FA Cup final this time. 
for the Premier League trophy. Everton getting that 10th championship in England. Just done. 82 points. Four point gap between us and Chelsea. And an even bigger gap to Manchester City. Liverpool in the eighth position. Yeah, Liverpool right now. The city of Liverpool is blue as we speak. Which is something I never thought I'd say. But here we are. And the team that we have created for it is looking incredible. All attackers above 90. All midfielders above 87. Every single defender above the 88 rating. By the way, shout out to Santos. He was only thought of as like a player for the reserves but he has taken over massively same like uh, same thing happened with Musa as well which you guys know and Pickford just keeps on going he's on an 89 as a 33 year old I don't know what the hell he's on Caprilli is ready to take over if he has to 85 rated goalkeeper that might be the highest backup goalkeeper I've ever had to be honest and by the way I keep seeing those comments about you guys just saying that I have like two goalkeepers on the bench in my rebuilds it happens but anyways let's take a look at the performances because this team is good enough to win anything now ferguson 27 and 9 hernandez 20 and 4 mcneil 19 and 11 musa 8 and 12 really really good stuff there but in the champions league things didn't go as i wanted them to we lost against bayern munich they kicked us out so maybe if we get the chance and we play a champions league final at some point Please let it be against Bayern Munich. Fun fact, at one point, Everton did actually win the biggest trophy there was in Europe, which was called like the Cup Winners Trophy or whatever. And now we are getting into the Champions League final in the weirdest path I've ever seen. We played against... Oh, Tottenham beats us in the FA Cup. Of course they do. So let me just show you who we played. Barcelona in the round of 16, which is fine, right? First game, 2-0 loss. Second game, 2-0 win. I assume we made it through on penalties, which is great. Then we played against Panathinaikos, I believe, where first game we struggled, second game we did really well and got through that. Then we played against Salzburg in the Champions League semi-finals, which shocks me, to then play against AC Milan, who were the big opponents of Liverpool in the 2005 final, where they made an incredible comeback, and Stevie G lifted that trophy sky high, to then parade it in the city of Liverpool. Now we could turn Liverpool blue properly. This is going to be a massive one as our entire starting 11 is past the 90, except Dewsbury Hall, who is on an 89 rating. The rest is above it, which is just unreal. We have created a team that can score many goals, can defend, can go ahead and do anything that is necessary. And in the Premier League, I assume... We have done pretty well again. Second. Okay. Ooh, that's a massive gap to Manchester City. That is huge, you know. 28 points. Not 28. 18 points right there. That's nuts. GG's Manchester City. You must, you must have had a great season. We had too many draws. 15 in that number. That is just not good enough. Now, goal scoring wise, we were good enough, I assume. Ferguson, good job, both 25-24, that's really good stuff. And McNeil coming up with 24 assists from centre forward. Another player that we have kept around, and if we go again into the squad, the players that we have kept, Onana, Branthwaite, Mikolenko, Pickford and McNeil, it's really nice that we didn't have to change much there, but I am very proud of what we have created right here with this squad. I think it looks amazing, and now... Let's, uh, let's take a look into the Manchester, not the Manchester, the AC Milan squad right here. Milan coming in with Leao, Mukoko, Chukvu, okay, Reinders, Gabri Vega, Enacer, that midfield is insane. Theo Todibo Guardiol, wow. Okay, that team is going to be a problem. I am currently sat here, ready to take on our opponents with Everton, but also seeing that Arsenal has taken on Luton Town. First half, 2-0 up. But Manchester City against Aston Villa is a 1-1 draw so far. Is there going to be someone dropping further out of the title race? We'll see it later on. I don't know it will be part... Uh, I don't think it will be part of this video. But hey, someone could drop even further out of it. But Liverpool creating a bigger gap to at least one of those sides. Now let's focus on our team. Mikolenko. Oh, what a cross. What a finish. 
Evan Ferguson nearly scores a banger to start off with in five minutes playtime. Solid tackle by Tuta. Let's do it again. Oh, that didn't work out. I'm kind of open at the back here. I'm very open at the back here. Rafa Leal against Branthwaite. Branthwaite, Pickford legend. Oh, no. Not again. Mukoko gets another chance, and this time he will score. A little further away from Pickford, he makes it happen for AC Milan. I told you this team would be a tough one to play against. 1-0 down. This is not ideal. McNeil. Oh, that's Evan Ferguson all day, I thought at least, but it wasn't. That is Musa picking up the ball, bringing it across to Dewsbury Hall. I always used to call him Drewsbury, but he gets taken out nearly. Go on then. Kucho, that would have been something, wouldn't it? Oh, McNeil somehow gets that ball across still. And off we go into Ferguson. Go for it. Kucho, <laughs> mate. What a what is that build up? McNeil's cross. It's a good one. Looking for Tuta. And Tuta scores. Yes. My man, 26 minutes. Former Eintracht Frankfurt centre back. Now Evertonian. Beautiful header. Looping into the far corner. Magnor stands no chance. McNeil, as always, on the set pieces. And it's good enough. Tuta. Well done, buddy. Didn't expect that to go in, if I'm honest. Into Evan Ferguson. Our left back is making a beautiful run. Mikolenko, can you get there? Yes, he can. Beauty of a cross. And Yunus Musa, who initially was brought in as a player to be a backup, has now stepped up in the biggest moment of the season. This is turning out to be a game in which crosses make the biggest difference. Mikolenko getting forward and whipping that cross onto Musa's head, who is in a perfect position. The 4-3-2-1 formation. I haven't visited it in a long time, but it's working. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, he missed that. Mukoko, how do you miss that, buddy? That should have been 2-2. Two -two. Come on. No. Of course. All right. That's well done. It's 2-2. Two -two. This AC Milan team, man, it is so hard to stop in attack. Gabri Vega always had an incredible shot on him. And now he makes it work. No one there to pick it up, though. I don't like this. Oh, my God, bro. They hit the freaking post. Off we go into the counter. McNeil on the run. Ferguson as well. Ferguson could be through here. No one is going to be able to catch up to him. Against Magnol. Just slides it past him. Let's go. 3-2. Taking the lead. Once again, Evan Ferguson on the bench for Brighton and the main man at Everton. That's how your career could go, pal. Beautifully taking that shot with calmness in front of one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Go on. Pass it inside. There we go. Down the left. Mikolenko, can you shoot? Bro? Yeah, he can. <laughs> yes, he very much can. I mean, that is a left back who has gotten an assist and now the most ridiculous goal in the Champions League final. An original of Everton, one of the better performing ones, Mikolenko. Thank you for everything. It doesn't matter. They keep on scoring. They just keep on scoring. And as I got, uh, conceded a goal, Manchester City just scored a free kick. Phil Foden blasted past the, D, uh, the wall. And it is 2-1 to City. It seems like Arsenal and Manchester City will pick up three points. The title race is on. Tomorrow, it's Liverpool against Sheffield United. I'm really hoping for an easy 5-6-0 win. Please, let's get that. Win that for me, please. Yes, let's go. Oh, no. How did that end up at their feet? Last minute, Mikolenko gets the ball. Tuta steps up as well. 90th minute, heroes. And of course, it has to be the big man now lifting the trophy as that last minute chance was the only one that was given to them. They had their opportunity. We ended it with strong defending and what a Champions League final we delivered right here, guys. Everton truly deserved to pick this one up. This is now officially their first Champions League trophy. Guys, 
Thank you so much for watching. I enjoyed this despite being the blue side of Merseyside. I have to honestly say, I do not want Everton to get relegated. I want that derby to always be there between the reds and the blues. Let's keep this going. Have a good day, guys. Take care and peace.